Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. We just appreciate everybody on this week. This is the weekly energy recap on Saturday the 13th. It was a crazy week. We had everything from bricks expanding, had LNG, uh, we had a hybrid ferry uh, that wouldn't work anymore, and they're spending in, in Scotland 246% extra for these ferries. Then we had mandates, we had regulatory actions. Uh, I'll tell you what, this, the central bank, uh currency is a huge deal we had some fantastic things had some great podcasts coming out michael yawn with security issues hold tight for this series we have china embedded into the grid and we have china also on some other security issues you uh the grid's under attack so don't miss these in the uh, series Always, always, thank you for everybody. If you're an energy expert and you want on this podcast, I don't care any energy type, any energy um, geopolitical. Uh, we want to talk energy and eliminate uh, humanitarian poverty and get the lowest cost kilowatt per hour out there. Thank you so much and enjoy the weekend. Um, and uh, we're turning this over to the staff. Have a great day. Natural gas plant guarding U.S. Northwest from winter blackouts is at risk. Michael, this is actually sad. Um, this came from Bloomberg. Uh, this is actually the LNG import facility right out of Boston. And here's where it gets really sad. They have had to use this. Everett is the LNG import facility. And it has kept the Northeastern folks alive. I am not kidding about that alive. They, it kept the power plants going. Yep. And the facility shutdown underscores the challenges facing the American grid transition to cleaner energy as it accelerates climate change triggers wilder weather. <laughs> <laughs> love me some bloomberg baby love me uh, some bloomberg oh yeah but he they bring up some great points everett was a key resource in providing additional gas supplies to new england during extreme coal said gary uh cunningham director of market research at risk for traditional energy um here's where it gets in with the FERC Michael they have been saying all along that our grid is near breaking point because of adding the renewables without the storage which we can't afford I just threw that in he didn't say it the, there are going to be facilities that are fossil based and climate damaging that are going to go offline and they're going to be replaced with alternatives that public policy and markets now have chosen. Here's where Governor Hochul, you have heard me laugh. I mean, talk about Governor uh, Hochul saying that she's got a 20% increase in energy this year, which was 2023. They got another one coming up in 2024. And then in 2025, they've got, guess how much? Oh, 100%. So yeah, it's it's pretty. Here's what I think is is hilarious is Bloomberg's trying to say really, really without saying it. They're trying to say, oh, this is not a great idea. Everybody else is in favor of it. I mean, they're seeing we got one quote in here. Gas is often seen as the transition fuel as the world moves to more environmentally friendly ways to generate heat and power. Everett's sign is a Everett's closer is a sign of that shift. But they're shutting natural gas. So on one breath, they're trying to say, well, you know, really natural gas is the transition fuel. But closing it down is a shift away from that, which is not good because we're going to just jump from one iceberg to the other. Again, we have the transition. It's, it, it is hilarious how, you know, I mean, good luck there. Good luck in New York. Good luck. You know what? Uh, one of the funniest lines that I got feedback, which is one of the rare times that I am funny is uh, we took a, a poll and that was all those in favor of letting uh, New York go with 100% no fossil fuels. 
that means anything delivered with diesel, anything, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this. You'd have no clues, no, uh, no clothes, no food. Um, all those in favor to let New York without fossil fuels, hundred percent renewable. I'm in, let's try it. Let's move over to the next um, proposed merger, Southwestern Chesapeake near $17 billion merger. I think, it, you know, just to give you guys an idea, this deal is roughly um, uh, valued at $17 million. This merger of equals, it would create one of the largest natural gas producers in the United States. The deal could come together as early as next week, according uh, to people familiar with the situation. This is according, again, to our friends over at Reuters. Southwestern had a market capitalization on Friday of roughly about $7 billion. Chesapeake was a little bit more than $10 billion. Um, Southwestern stock rose about 7%. Chesapeake um, shares rose nearly three percentage point. Um, you know, this would be about 7.4 billion cubic feet of gas per day. This would basically uh, leapfrog EQT, making it probably the largest natural gas producer in the United States. You know, they, their existing positions, both in the Haynesville and Louisiana, would allow it to kind of refocus on some liquefied natural gas ex uh, exports on the Gulf Coast. Uh, you have to remember, guys, um, you know, Chesapeake was founded by Aubrey McLennan. You know, you talk about spending money. <laughs> That guy loved to spend money, um, you know, millions of uh, buying millions of acres across the country, um, you know, laden it with probably the most insane debt structure of all time that finally led to the thing being um, uh, filing for bankruptcy uh, in 2022. They were able to reduce reduce their debt by more than seven billion dollars through that process and prioritize, quote unquote, returning cash um, to shareholders through a bunch of divestitures and exiting its Haynesville position, um, which is down there in Louisiana, East Texas area. They also sold a bunch of oil assets in Texas. They bought um, a bunch of other stuff. Point of the matter is, guys, they've been tinkering on. They needed to do something. They've got an insane amount of debt load. Um, can we go ahead and throw this tweet up? This is from WTI Realist. Um, it's, I think it says, all you need to know about what this uh, merger would look like. Staggering a pro forma Chesapeake would be at 2 billion or 2 million cubic or BOE per day and still almost be worthless. <laughs> that goes to show you the, you know, of course it's a BOE. We're talking BOE. So what's that in, you know, to be about 7.4 BCF per day. Being in the natural gas business is hard. You got to love to see these uh, uh, natural gas prices go above three dollars. That does make everything a lot more profitable. But um, you know, this is a a merger of equals. It'd be interesting to see what happens to the names. Um, I saw a few tweets go out there about you know can't really get can you really get rid of the Chesapeake name? It's just so it's just so legendary in the industry. It's thinking about you know all of the history behind it. Southwestern's been around for a while, but they're obviously gonna have to come up with a with a new. Um, new new name or something cuz you know i don't you know or or you know cuz this is definitely a merger it's going to be interesting to see how this all shakes out southwestern with a lot less debt than chesapeake but chesapeake with a larger market cap so i wonder so what the concession would, will be would this there this be like hollywood dating so it'd be south cheek or oh. west west eek uh west check uh I'm i guess sure. is they keep the chesapeake name but in 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 I would think they would keep the Chesapeake name, but there's going to be not a lot of concessions. But Southwestern, if you're if you're a shareholder, if you're on that management team, you're 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 coming in saying we're equals here, and we're right. you know. But I do think that I, my guess would be that. they keep the 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 Chesapeake name. We're definitely going to uh, cover Apache Callen on the deal spotlight. If this merger comes through with Southwestern and Chesapeake, we will definitely make sure to cover that as well. So these gives us two great deals um, to outline. You and I have talked on the podcast about our buddy, good uh, Gavin Newsom. Yep. Uh, if he dives into the uh, ocean there, they're going to blame it on Exxon for an oil spill. He's got so much oil in his hair. I guarantee you, you know, penguins would be dying. Yeah, that's that. the most prolific oil field in California is Gavin yeah. Newsom's hairpiece. Oh, yeah. They just kind of go do a get it out of his do-rag. I love me a do-rag out there. I always wore one when the kids that's were funny. little. Okay, myth number one. Uh, Newsom's energy policy drives progress. <laughs> and I don't think that I'm going to vote on that. All of our listeners that listen to the podcast, if you have any others that should be added to this list, 
call us. Myth number two, supporters of fossil fuel are climate change deniers. <laughs> climate changes. It's called seasons. Okay. Um, I'm and, and remember, I, I say this, I've said this frequently. I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to remember when it was global warming. And they did the sleight of hand to climate change. It's the shell game, Michael. Yes. I talked about it this morning on the on the energy uh, realities now that instead of that, and it's the shell game with no P. And all you're doing is moving it around. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Myth number three, 97% of climate scientists agree that we face a climate crisis that requires the rapid elimination of fossil fuels. <laughs> the gong. Uh, no, that is, that is not true. In fact, uh, we love our uh, interview with Patrick uh, Moore. He's now, I mean, that is one sharp cat, founder of uh, mm. Greenpeace. Myth number four, California is a climate leader. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, in fact, they are a leader in the highest prices of energy to the consumers and the greatest highest prices for U-Haul trucks leaving California. I'm not kidding. Okay. Let's go here. Myth number five, the U.S. should lead COP28 in committing to net zero by 2050. I love what uh, it says. Truth. Net zero by 2050 is a death sentence to any economy that adopts it. China won't. And right. the developing world that desperately needs fossil fuels, the U.S. should be leading the way in energy freedom, which I like. And oh, yeah. Look at the myth number six. There is a graphic. If we could have our producer pull this graphic in installed electric capacity in California, solar and wind in 2013. There's the yellow bar. That's about what? 10 percent uh, yep. estimated there. Then you have 2022 solar and wind goes to probably 65 but the reliable capacity mm. <laughs> drops down and i wonder how much money that was let's go to myth just number a few seven. trillions no worries oh yeah, yeah what's a few trillion between friends uh california's grid is the model for the u.s look at that graph chart uh miss producer if you could pull this in residential electricity prices it is going up at a dramatic price uh, California is myth number eight, solving solar and winds with batteries. One day of world energy, uh, 460 million megawatts, one trillion in Tesla mega packs, 190 trillion. Next, I'm not even going to argue with that one. Myth number nine, uh, ice ban is a model for the U.S. <laughs> We got to get the, this picture up here. August 25th, 2023, CA announces gasoline car ban. Seven days later, California tells citizens not to charge their EVs. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Um, and, and then there was another California man uh, two months ago. He ordered a, a Tesla. I want me a Tesla Cybertruck. It's bulletproof. I need one. Just, you know, our fans love me, but not that much. And so when I, what I, what I want to do is uh, when you sit back and take a look, this man ordered a EV. He then, uh, the electric company told him that he had to have another complete hundred meg circuit come into his house. And then he wanted to add a, another, uh, something else EV and they said oh you got to have a third but yet we don't have any available so you can't even get an EV to charge at home so California cannot add enough power I thought that was pretty cool so let's go on to myth number 10 CA's anti-oil efforts are a model for the U.S. look at this graphic these oil companies are ripping us off. They think that the oil companies are actually ripping them off when it's actually uh, how they're doing all their policies. Yeah, I don't know who wrote um, Gavin Newsom's energy policy, but uh, he was uh, definitely some um, IR guy of the week that got fired. So. Yeah. Former IR guy of the week. Let's go to Bricks. Hey, you heard it here a second. The other day when I uh, said that uh, Putin's going to be the uh, new president, 
it is now official. Uh, Putin is the president of BRICS for this year, and it is going to be expanding. Uh, uh, this is just amazing. August, the bloc had announced that it would be admitting six new members. Um, but now Putin um, is really sweetening the pot for, I believe it's 30 more. Let me look at the number here. Are we uh, now that Putin's president of BRICS? Are we finally going to get able to apply as a podcast? Uh, yes, I think Putin's actually going to sponsor the podcast because he's seen our uh, imitations of him. Hey, you know, he's he's all jealous that uh, he's now watching the shark over the tank. So as the five, uh, let's see, where is it? He's I think there's about 30 that he's planning on bringing on board. That's huge. It is. Uh, it's it's going to be absolutely crazy. BRICS is becoming kind of the new powerhouse in the world, considering you have the G7 on one side, which is the United, the United States, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Great Britain, Japan. And then you have all of these other countries, these BRICS members. You know, I definitely think Argentina is going to be one country to watch out for to get in there. We know Saudi has now joined. We know that the BRICS is almost becoming the new OPEC in terms of global oil control. It will be uh, because uh, also uh, you heard it here a second. Japan may be, this is my opinion, don't have the facts in yet. What I'm uh, trying to say is when you sit back and take a look, um, Japan, you heard it here first. Japan may be leaving the G7 in a few years because if, if the United States weaponizes uh, more pipelines to China, I mean, to Japan, Japan is already uh, grumpy enough at the U.S. that they're taking energy deals and setting them up, being quiet about mm -hmm. it. I guarantee you, Japan is going to be in bricks, and Japan is going to go away from the G7 because we are Interesting. Idiots. So now that's a prediction right there. That is, you heard it here second. And mm -hmm. I guarantee you, I've gone on the record. If that happens, you're going to go back. Stu was right twice. Blind mice finds cheese every once in a while. Flagship hybrid ferry now only runs on diesel. This is an amazing story. Uh, this is a ferry in, uh, in Scotland. Now, uh, one of the funny things about Scotland is uh, they have cut down millions of trees in order to put in wind farms. Now, uh, this is called the MV Holleg was the first in the world to use a system without carbon emissions by 20% when it was launched in 2012. It is an, a battery machine, a battery ferry that also had dual fuel, which is a uh, diesel powered engine. But you can hear right there that it was only 20%. So the batteries didn't last that long. The batteries broke on the, the $10 million vessel, and it would cost um, six years. Now, the problem in the ferry is the MV Glen Rosa, which are six years overdue and $260 million over budget, which is additional ferries that they're buying in this configuration. He said the strategy was flawed, and it makes a lot of sense. Having a dual fuel that you want to film, on, uh, you want to run on batteries, and then use the diesel doesn't really get you that much because the batteries weigh so much, and then they broke down, and now they are more expensive, and so they're just running on diesel, dragging around all this weight. The report claims that the total running cost of the hybrid ferries is 259% more than a diesel-only equivalent. Uh, the sturgeon was designed as the ship's godmother and said the time it symbolized everything Scottish government is striving to achieve. Well, kind of like the U.S. government, <laughs> if you're trying to achieve going broke, Looks like we're uh, net rolling right along on that. So I'm all in on hybrids, and uh, I think hybrids are the way to go. But you can't run them this way. Possibly there was a better design, and now that there are better designs out there, I think I would stop production on those other ferries. 
This part is really kind of wild when you say Russia announces 30 new member countries for BRICS. Wow. BRICS started out with Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and it is expanding out. It is going to be well over half the population of the world before too long at all. This is a huge financial uh, agreement between these um, countries. Uh, it is going to take the U.S. dollar down. People are saying it's not going to happen soon. I think it's going to happen sooner than later based off of our geopolitical issues. Take a look at this one. Uh, Putin being the president, it's going to be pretty interesting. He's the president of BRICS this year. Thank <laughs> you.